What if who you are here today, the introverted shy you here today, what if that is fake? What if by default, you're chill, expressive, at ease, and through different experiences, life experiences, conditioning, you've clammed up and put on this shell, this shy, stifled, introverted shell, and you've been living in this shell for so long that you've convinced yourself, this is me. This is huge, by the way. You hear this saying, you know, fake it till you make it. Well, if I'm introverted, I better fake being extroverted. No. Here's what I say. It's not fake it till you make it. It's act real until you remember. Act real until you remember. Meaning, right now, who you think you are, what if that's faking it? What if the introverted you hear is faking it? That's being fake. And you're going to have to act real, which sure isn't going to feel very comfortable. It's going to stretch your comfort zone until you remember, hey, this shy little shell, maybe that isn't me. Now, granted, I do want to mention here, you could go a lot deeper and say, okay, but there is, you know, some difference between, you know, an extroverted and an introvert. And that's true, right? Maybe. No, I, I mean, I, there's definitely some traits, right? Like even myself, um, I definitely recharge when I'm alone versus around people for the most part, not always, but for the most part. Um, there's still some tendencies here and there, but they're very minor. Why? Because I refuse to believe that, you know, you were, say, put on this earth, this thing, life, right? And, you know, it's like, you are going to be the shy, introverted, stifled person. That's your destiny. I refuse to believe that that's my destiny or anyone's destiny. I truly believe and look at children. Right? Do they all, oh, all shy and clammed up? Like, okay, some, but for the most part, they're very free. They're very expressive, right? They haven't gone through all those experiences that get us to clam up. So sure, you might notice right now, I'm an introvert. I'm shy. Okay. But maybe this shy, introverted version of myself isn't the real me. And instead of doubling down on it and trying to make it work, like, well, what are some, uh, Good jobs for an introvert shy person. Hey, let's break this. Let's break this illusion. Let's act real until I remember that, hey, there's more to me than this. Okay, so that here is the first key thing to let land. Don't let it define you. Do not let it confine you. I do love personality tests. I recommend a lot of my clients to actually take a personality test. However, here's the difference. When you do a personality test, you have the choice. You get the result. Mistake that people make is, this is now me. The way I view it is, oh, here are the aspects that are acceptable to me, that I've deemed are acceptable, and it can show you, you could say, the counterparts that you've labeled as unacceptable. Okay, this comes down to the way the word conditioned, right? You come into this world, as I said, you're free, you're expressive, you're like, you know, authentic, and then a few things happen, right? You experience trauma. Every single human experiences trauma, right? You are dependent also as a child on whoever is raising you, your parents, whoever that is. And you also have a very limited perception. Now, here's what happens, right? Your parents are going to try to teach you, or again, whoever is raising you, your you know, primary caregiver, they're going to try to teach you the way, right? Here's this thing called the world. Here's society. These are the rules, et cetera, et cetera. And the way that uh, we're taught this is through punishment and reward, right? If you're a good child, you're rewarded. If you're naughty, you're punished. That's the way things are currently wor working, right? That's how it, how it is. Now, say you're punished for being loud. As a kid, very limited perception, you could interpret that as, in this moment, I'm not loved. If your parent's like, hey, hey don't be too loud. <gasps> in this moment, my parent does not love me. If they don't love me, they could abandon me. If they abandon me, I die. Right? Not true, but very limited perception. Now you start thinking, wow, if I keep being loud and they keep not loving me, my chances of dying are going up. So your survival instinct <laughs> kicks in. Your life is at risk. So you think trauma. Okay, that's an example of trauma. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that aspect, the loud part of you, and you're going to disown it. You're going to say, ooh, this is not acceptable. This threatens my existence? Nope. And you're going to just stuff it down and say, that's on me, that's on me, that's on me. And then you're going to keep living your life this way. 
And there are going to be layers and layers and layers of resistance to ever embodying that aspect of you again. Because you told yourself, if I embody that, if I'm loud, if I'm expressive, I die. It's not true, but that's a link that you made. So we all have this. We create this split. There's parts of yourself that are, you're like, well, if I embody these aspects of myself, that's the acceptable me. That's when I receive approval. It's the good little boy Julian version. Like, yes, that's me. And then we all have this dark side, if you will, this unacceptable side of things that we disowned. We have this split. Now, when you do a personality test, what does it show you? It shows you the acceptable side. So if you're not sure, like, hmm, what are some things I might have disowned? You can do a test and it'll say, huh, if this is the acceptable side, what's the opposite of my result? And that is the side that you're going to have to reown. Traditional mainstream advice says this, huh, are you introverted? Are you shy? You better toughen up. You better put yourself out there in social situations. Get used to being in social situations. Desensitize yourself to social situations and start just being louder and force yourself to be louder. That's what society says. It's this route of progressive desensitization. It's just force it. And this here, will you get some results? Of course. It's a lot better than just remaining the shy, introverted person in your room doing nothing. However, it doesn't get to the cause. And if you go too far down that route, it actually becomes an obstacle. Okay, so let me explain. Progressive desensitization simply means if you're introverted, all right, if you start forcing yourself to go out in, say, social situations, to talk to more people, to be more expressive... Um, you can desensitize yourself to those types of environments, right? If you're like, oh, it's too many people. If you just keep going in those environments, you're going to slowly start desensitizing yourself and getting used to it, right? Feeling a little bit more comfortable in those environments. So it does work to a certain extent, but here's the problem. It doesn't get to the cause and it's not permanent. Meaning as soon as you stop desensitizing yourself, what happens? You revert back, right? People do all these social anxiety challenges, for example, and they're like, look, now I'm a lot more comfortable being myself and being expressive in public. But then as soon as they stop doing the social anxiety challenges, right back down to shy, stifled, little me, right? So it only works as long as you keep doing those challenges. And if you simply sit down and logically look at, you know, Okay, I'm alive from now till the day I die. Is this really the strategy that I want to take? Do I want to be the eight-year-old person who's like, Oh, you know what? Uh, sorry, grandkids. Uh, do my social anxiety challenges. No. That's terrible, right? It's like, every day got to do my social anxiety challenges. What? No. Okay, so it's not the strategy that I would suggest going with. Here's the way that I personally go about it. And it still involves, by the way, social anxiety challenges, but the approach, just like the personality test, is very different. Meaning, you can do a social anxiety challenge. You can put yourself in one of those situations. However, instead of doing it to numb yourself to it, you do it to trigger yourself so that you can then let go of whatever is triggered. Get it? So say we go to that example, right? Can't be loud. And you disown that aspect. Now you go out and you do a social anxiety challenge and you make yourself, yeah, be loud, right? Act real till you remember. When you do that, you're going to experience so much resistance within. You're going to be what we call triggered, right? Oh my God, like trying to be loud and every part of you is going to cringe and fight against it. Now, right? Desensitization means get used to that and stuff it back down. Be numb to it. No, no, no. Instead, do that to get triggered. And then with all those sensations, you can let go of it. So it's very different. One approach is I do actions to desensitize myself. The other is I do it to actually resensitize myself and let go to dissolve that split. Okay. You can write this down, by the way, action, trigger, release, repeat. This is a process that I teach my mentoring clients. Okay. Action, trigger, release, repeat. You take action, it triggers something that you've been resisting, right? Comes a little closer into your awareness. You release it and then you repeat. Action, trigger, release, repeat. That is the way. 
Okay, now I mentioned here too that if you go too far down the desensitization route, what happens, it can actually be an obstacle. And this is crucial. Okay, I've seen it where some people are so used to going out and desensitizing themselves that when they go do one of these action trigger release repeat challenges, so to say, instead of actually getting triggered, they go back into that numb state. Okay, you can think of progressive desensitization as you going into this numbness, like this, you create this armored you, this very numb armored version of yourself, and you just kind of lock into that mode, right? It's like going to your happy place, if you will. It's like, oh, I'm nervous. Let's go to my happy place. And then you just kind of operate from there. So what you're going to have to do, if that's you, and you're like, well, I don't get triggered because I'm just so used to going to my happy place, is when you start doing these challenges again the right way, you will have to resist that urge to go into your happy place and reconnect with the version of you that you were before desensitizing yourself. Reconnect with the old you that really scared you so you get triggered and you can then let go of it. So it can be an obstacle if you do too much of it. Okay, but this is really how you break free for good. It's not forcing yourself, desensitizing yourself, it's understanding why, right? Huh, there's an acceptable me and unacceptable me. Who I am here today isn't necessarily the real me. It's just a version of myself that I've been embodying for so long. I've convinced myself it's me. And instead of trying to fight against it, let's dive into all those things that I've been disowning and let's re-own them. This is done through letting go and to facilitate the process, action, trigger, release, repeat. Act real until you remember. Okay, this is really how you break free for good. And once more, it's possible. And you got to remind yourself it is possible. Like this program is such a game changer. The way everything's structured and the material, it's been already even for me, it's just been, I'm noticing a crazy change in, in the way that my whole life's like playing out. What you put together is just incredible. There's nothing like that. I've just jumped like a million levels. It's just been a complete 180 for my experience of existing. That's awesome. <laughs> it's just been so huge in terms of so many of the things I'm finally understanding and realizing and epiphanies I'm having. What you do is a huge inspiration to me and I think it's one of the most beautiful things you can give to another human in this entire world. You saved my in life, man. I'm telling you, that's, this is real, man. Sometimes all it takes is just one person who believes in you. Find people who are where you are in life and model them, work with them. I would not be here if I didn't have people who held me accountable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt a click and things are changing. This program was just top notch. Seriously, like this is a masterpiece. This is, this is perfect. Everything, the way it's set up, the live calls, like all the support from the coaches is incredible. It's, it's been nuts. I just had my tears of joy. This was the best decisions I ever made. Thank you for creating something wonderful like this. This program was phenomenal. This program was, uh, was amazing. This program has definitely changed my life. I know for a fact I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I was expecting from the program. It's been uh, spectacular. I feel really lucky to, to have found you. Thank you so much, Julian. It's, uh, it's worth every dollar.